I'm Elvis. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm James Cawley. <laughs> sort of Elvis. They pay me to be Elvis. I was Captain Kirk. I kind of hung that up a long time ago. No, 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 not really. They're very, very similar. Oh. Well, they're, they're both very strong leader t leadership type people. Uh, they're, they're both, you know, big with women, you know, both pop culture icons. So there's, there's a lot in common. I think, I think if Captain Kirk were to ever meet Elvis, they wouldn't like one another because they'd be competing for the same chick. That's kind of the way I've always approached it. Who would get the green? Probably Elvis would get the green one. I think he would probably you know, be the only... Uh, human being in the universe that could that could outdo Kirk with women. I really believe that. And I get to play him now. <laughs> I, him now. <laughs> I was playing him before, so. Uh, professionally, I think my first professional Elvis job was in 1989. So that's, you know, a long time doing this now. Wow. Um, well, you know, it goes back to when I was a kid. You know, I, all my neighborhood friends, we always used to rush home and watch Star Trek after school and all that kind of thing. And then, that first one? Yeah. No, no, not first one. It was the first syndicated run, basically. It was the early 70s. And then, um, you know, we would, we would, back then, we would buy the little um, AMT exploration sets and put them together. And that's how, that was our phasers and communicators. But we, we had a little play area in my basement that my dad um, started putting together. And it just kept getting more and more elaborate. So my dad helped me build my own little version of the Enterprise that we played in. So I guess probably the, the, the fascination with it all probably started there. And then as an adult, um, when I started touring as Elvis, and I started to have a little more money, when I would come home from work, you know, I would be here for a month at a time or something, I would go uh, with my grandfather to his workshop and we would start building these set pieces because I always thought, you know, I'm gonna make my own little Star Trek film with my friends. And that was probably 96 that we actually started, you know, building like full-scale set pieces. I don't think anybody had ever done it before. I, you know, I was not the first to release um, a film like that. I think the Exeter guys released the first modern kind of Star Trek fan film, but they didn't have a bridge or any of that kind of stuff. And I was very adamant that, that if I was gonna do it, I was gonna do it full bore, and I was gonna play with all the toys. I was gonna be Captain Kirk. I was gonna you know, show the world that Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock were still cool, and there was still room for them, you know, at a time when Next Generation and all that was kind of a big deal. It's been a huge, huge, you know, effort, um, uh, and not an easy one to get to where it is now. Um, has it been worth it? I guess to varying degrees. Yes, I've, I've met a lot of great people. I have a, I have this wonderful um, extended family of, of, of friends and Trekkie fans, and uh, and I got a great little playground here when I when I'm here and able to enjoy it. The full 360 bridge was, um, when did we assemble it? It was right before we shot uh, To Serve All My Days with Walter, and you'll have to forgive me because I've lost track of the years, but it was right, you know, we actually completed the 360 bridge for that episode. And um, it stayed that way until we relocated here. And then there was some discussion about, well, you know, we have to redo some of these consoles anyway because of their age and what we did, and, and, and so let's leave this side open to be easier to to do shots and that kind of thing. So I kind of went along with it, but uh, you know, I missed the 360 bridge, so we're, we're putting the 360 bridge back, just so that I have it for my own enjoyment. I think the, 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 the pinnacle of all of that was uh, being in uniform, sitting in the captain's chair and having Walter turn around and call me captain. For me, that was it. You know, I could have died at that moment and that would have been enough, you know, it worked. I did not, at that moment, I did not see the cameras, but I sure as heck was in the moment. You know, I was standing face to face with someone who was arguably one of my heroes. You know, I love Walter to this day and um, um, had great conversations with him, went to lunch with him many times, would go to LA and visit him. I miss him. I miss him a lot. I haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, but he's definitely one of my heroes. And to have him turn around and, first of all, to have him participate, you know, with fans. And then, and then for him to be in that iconic role, that uniform, and just to look at you and say Captain Kirk was, you know, pretty amazing to a young fan.